morning this is rig guy this morning we're going to uh unbox these voice and power reeds for my 1982 yamaha it250 i've already removed the, the reed cage from the bike since we don't want to take all the time to see that i will probably record putting it back together though uh, as you can see these reeds are stock reeds they're stainless steel and absolutely no light showing through these and uh but we're gonna go ahead and install these these power reeds so we need to go ahead and take these out making sure we don't strip the heads off of them i'm trying to take a note of how tight they actually are these look like they have never been out of this bike <clears throat> we're not going to use these uh reed stops that are on here either because they are uh comes with these reed stops is what we're going to use oops i don't have a magnetic screwdriver so we are going to use these screws we're going to clean them up and we're going to put some blue loctite on the absolutely awesome condition we're going to make sure that we uh we don't damage those we make sure that we know which side was out when we put them away we'll put them away in something flat wipe these off i'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of carburetor cleaner on these so that that loctite gets a gets a bite on there we'll do the same thing to the other side probably one of the most important things here do not strip the heads because <laughs> then i'll have to order some new ones Threads are nice and tight though. Hate to have one of these screws go into my going to my piston. A lot of vibration going on. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. All right. So we got these off too, this one. They're a little bit, a little bit con concave on one side, but that's to be expected for as old as they are. Okay, so. We'll just go ahead and spray a little bit of carburetor cleaner on this uh i don't want to get it actually i'm gonna put it on my rag because i don't want to get it on that on that rubber surface right there just gonna wipe this metal section off right here don't want to get this crap on this rubber that would have been a mistake just a little bit right there okay so Around here, around the gasket surface. Uh, actually, the gasket was on this side. Guys, I don't, I don't edit out my mistakes. It is real, real life stuff. Only edit out camera issues. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, just that's pretty clean. This was actually a repop. My. Uh, was lucky enough to find this this intake it works really well okay so now okay so this was
Again, it doesn't matter which side, uh, which side you face right out of the gate because eventually, you know, when they start wearing out, then you start flipping them over and you start flipping them over and stuff like that. So pretty much. Round side down. You know how it goes. So set them on there. I've done reeds before, so it's been a while, and they were actually old reeds that I flipped over. <coughs> so let me turn the I'm gonna turn the video off. I'm gonna get some water. And decided to put this uh, Loctite down in the holes because it was a little bit easier to keep keep it from getting all on the reeds and uh, you know just basically just getting all over the place so the Loctite down in the holes this plate here try to center it up get that first one in the hole have the blue thread locker in the holes and I've gotten the screws all started what I'm looking for here is I can see through the reeds which is a bonus so I want to try to center these primary pedals where I can see that they're centered over the opening that's provided in the secondary then I want to look at the secondary and make sure that it's equal distance from the ends of the re-block. Once I once I've seen what I want to see, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten down the the centering. This is the centering screw for the whole setup. And I'll go ahead and run these down. And uh that's the only reed stop that you have right there is that metal piece. So we want to check and make sure that they're still centered where we had them. And uh, I'm going to crank on these a little bit. Now the thread locker should do its job. I'm going to go ahead and wipe the thread locker off of the inside. You don't need any of that going into the cylinder. So that's how that's done pretty much. I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and uh, then we'll I'll go ahead and record putting it back on the bike. So I got my reed cage all put together and everything is tight. So I'm going to go ahead and stick it into the motor here. In front of the, doesn't really matter which direction it goes. And uh, gasket, that gasket's still good because I didn't put it in there very long ago. I guess I could have put this on the same side. I was, I was standing. Yeah, you're all kicking on that. All oh, this. down there until it's the bottom I'll get them all centered without disturbing this gasket very very easy motorcycle to work on I mean you do have to have some knowledge but I don't use torque specs on these. I just, uh, I pretty much am so used to working on them that I know how tight they go. I do torque my my head, my head bolts though, and my cylinder bolts. A few other things that are very, that is hard to feel out, but these are very easy to feel out. 
I need that. Give me that wrench. And that, uh, using these Torx bit fittings, wrenches, because I don't have my Allen's, they work the same, so. Which one did I tighten? Bottom one, huh? I'm gonna tighten this corner up here a little bit. I'm gonna tighten this corner down here a little bit. Four corner it. If you ever tune the drum head, you know what to do, kind of like a star pattern. I'm gonna tighten it a little bit more. Okay, done with that. Let's go ahead and slip this back on here. What is that? This is your intake clamp for that side, and I'll go ahead and get this screw started in just a thread or two, and get this one back on this side. I've loosened up my. I took all the screws out for the air box and I took all the screws out for this mud guard that makes it a little bit easier to uh, get the carburetor in and out. I always take and I always put the carburetor, take the carburetor out from this side and put it in from this side. So now we're gonna go ahead and put our carburetor back in. Come around this side. I don't know, babe. I wouldn't use it. My wife is asking me about Crisco in the cabinet. Okay, you want to make sure your slide, you put your slide back in there that you could line it up with the, the groove inside the carburetor. Otherwise you'll uh, more than likely be wide open when you start your bike, either stuck or wide open. I'd rather be stuck down. <clears throat> Say it like I've had it happen to me before, right? Tighten that up by hand. Or a little ripped. <laughs> ripped, but nonetheless, we'll put our dust cover back on there anyways. It does do a little bit of work. Okay. We got that back on there. Let's feed our fuel line back through the little holder on the clamp. Nope, you can stay on the side. Now we're going to pull the box this way. You shove it into the air box and pull it around and get it lined up. Now it's got to stop at the at the top right there. It keeps your carburetor centered, it keeps it at the right angle it's supposed to be. We're gonna tighten this clamp first. And then <clears throat> I'll get my Phillips. I guess that's the only tool I need from over there. Push this on the other side, so let's push this vent hose on the other side of these lines right here. Like I said, I've there's a lot of things that you gotta make sure you get right back where they go. Now I'm still tightening this front clamp right here. Let's make sure it's in all the way and then finish tightening it up. poke a hole in it right <laughs> that'd be great right. make it that usually about as tight as I can get it without breaking through it now get the air box back get the air box back where it's supposed to be and actually uh, bolt it down bolt everything down where back where it goes so that uh I'm not clamping that down and having this in the wrong spot, right? So uh, these go back on the these go back on this mud guard. Put these on first. You don't have to, like Mom said, don't move the camera so fast, okay? Hmm. Where'd 
Where'd that go? There it is. Gotta love it. Okay, so I got those back in and tight. And uh, one of those one of those screws is in poor condition and I had to move them from one side to the other. So uh, let's get this started first. This one started and then spin this around. I wish this bike had a, I do wish it did have a removable subframe. It would make this, my life a lot easier in this situation. But, this bike is anywhere as light as some of these, some of the 90s bikes anyway. My lovely notification sound. Take note that this air box has to be back in this little hole here too. And this heater hose works just as good as anything else. Works better actually. Works better than what's designed to be there. Okay, so I've got those screws back in. I got these screws back in. I got to tighten this clamp. And uh, let's just tighten this big clamp back up. But you see how it makes it so much easier to uh, get the carburetor off without without putting too much force on the on the rubber. You don't try to force it out of there and end up tearing the rubber off especially on this thing it's expensive and I don't even know if I can find one of these box boots check this again okay One time okay now I gotta go over on the other side and get my uh, air induction box hose back up down here first that's always hard I'm gonna put it on here first okay let's turn it put it on here uh, let's slide this clamp down it's my fancy clamp wrench put on Let's put our fuel line back on okay the only thing I have left to put back on is a seat and the Side covers. I know the seat cover isn't in perfect shape, but I'm gonna get a new one pretty soon. So, let's see that gone. But if you got extra extra hardware left over when you're done, then you got problems. Put this side on first while we're over here. Okay. 
our first start with the voice and reeds. See how this goes. You notice it doesn't leak gas anymore when uh, I leave the gas on. It's because I changed the, I've since changed the needle in the carburetor and uh, works good now. Yeah, that's just W40. Used to be one kick. Oh. 